G'day, Nick from AustralianNativeBee.com uh, Today I'm going to talk about feeding your stingless bees but before I move too far into it I will say that I'm not a fan of feeding stingless bees non-stop. Um, feeding your stingless bees should only be when your bees really really need it and if you're a commercial producer of uh, honey for stingless bees um, I would recommend not feeding them uh, because uh, that's going to come across in your honey and you don't want to be <laughs> nailed for having sugar in your honey. Um, I'll be talking through different types of feeders, how to get your bees to come to your feeders and also uh, giving you a recipe that I was given by Bob the Bee Man uh, for feeding your bees. So I hope you enjoy this episode. All right guys, one of the first things you're going to want to do is set yourself up a place that you put all your resins from excess hives, uh, logs that you've opened, uh, clear viewing panels that you've replaced, anything that has stingless bee resin on it, put it in a central location. This uh, location is going to become your stingless bee feeding area. And the use of resins to attract bees is very, very effective. Uh, Kadagi is one of the best attractants. If you live in sort of Indo-Pacific region and you have breadfruit trees, uh, breadfruit resin is another really, really strong attractant to stingless bees. Um, most of the resin here is soaked into the ground, so there's not many uh, bees coming to it, but they still know this area as an area to collect resin. Uh, this morning I went to somebody's house that had bought one of my hives and their hive was full of Kadagi seed so I asked can I have some of that seed because I'm making a video and I need it so she had probably 600 grams of uh, Kadagi seed built up in a colony of hers and I said remove that because I have seen colonies of stingless bees die uh, from influx of Kadagi seed. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is set up a little box and that's just going to shield the feeder a little bit from the weather. You don't have to have one of these, you could set it up under the eaves of your house or whatever. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some of this fresh Kadagi seed and the bees will learn this area as a place to go feed. Okay, now it's time to make a sugar feed mix for your stingless bees. And uh, what I'm going to do is boil four kilos of uh, water. I'm going to add six kilos of white sugar. Um, the temperature is going to drop from boiling uh, down to about 70 degrees Celsius. We're going to bring it back up to 80 degrees Celsius and then we're going to add 6 grams of citric acid at the end. So I'll do this in a time lapse so you can just see it all. Now the main reason we're using a sugar mix over say a natural honey mix is because of a little pest called the forehead fly. Now that fly isn't attracted, it will eat this mix, but as a last resort after everything else is eaten in the hive. Um, the other reason is if you use a liquid honey mix within your hive, it ferments if there's too much, lets off fumes and will kill all your bees. Uh, trust me, I've done that. So don't do that, I'll show you later. Uh, once your mix turns clear, it's done. All right, I just wanted to go through a few really simple types of feeders that you can make at home. This one here is a pebble feeder. Uh, it's just got rocks in there to prevent the bees from drowning and they can drink between the rocks. But you can also use um, sticks for that style of feeder. This one here is, um, I designed this originally to go inside stingless beehives uh, because I was feeding micro colonies at that time. It's uh, made of a milk lid and a soda bottle and I wanted to design something that everybody could potentially build at home. The soda bottle lid 
uh, when it's sealed prevents the food from just falling out and flowing over the edge. It suctions the food in there. And at the bottom here you can see that there's little slots and holes uh, for the bees to drink through and for the food to flow out from. So basically you put that in there, fill it with food and the food won't flow over that lip. So it's a good little one for in hive use. This one here is just simply a sponge in a container. You put your food in the base there, put your sponge in on top, get yourself explanatory. This is one I 3D printed. It's an on hive feeder, it goes on the front of a hive. There's uh, some great on, on hive feeders or entrance feeders that actually plug into the entrance of hives. But this is just one I made up, so I'll put in a little thing how that works. Now the last feeder, uh, which is my favourite feeder, it's a float feeder, it's got a decent amount of volume that it can take, uh, is the feeder that we'll be using in the video, so you'll get to see that one. Uh oh, look who's decided to show up. Honeybees, uh, once they decide on something and tell the hive, they all show up and it's a very hard case trying to work against them. So what I'm going to do is actually move my resin place around the other side and leave them to forage the resin on the ground. Alright, so I've moved my Kadagi seed around the other side of the house, away from the honeybees, and you can see that the stingless bees are really going to it. I've put a little blob of it on top of the float for the float feeder and I'm going to show you now uh, what happens when we remove this. Don't throw this away, keep it, it's really really good for luring bees. So I'm going to remove that and we'll put our food in the feeder and the float in the feeder too. Okay here's our food, our liquid food and we're going to add that into our feeder. And we're going to get our float with our bees going to it. One more thing I'd like to show you is that we have uh, some ants. Now ants will find your food. So placing your feeder into a jar of water will prevent the ants coming in. Let me just show you what that looks like underneath. So you can see at this point all the bees are going onto the feeder and what's going to happen is the bees will discover that that food is at the edge of that float there and start to go to it. Now when that happens I'm actually going to put a lid on here and it means that only the stingless bees are going to be able to go in through these slots at the side here and we won't have any honeybees because honeybees will come and they'll tell their friends and they will drink it all before the stingless bees get a chance. If all went well for you, your feeder should look like this. You've got bees coming and going in and out. The bees abdomen will also look a little bit uh, clear or full of nectar when they come out of the feeder. Finally, I want to show you this little box. This is so that you can feed your bees during the night time or throughout winter. Your bees will go out the pipe into that little box even when the weather's cold to go to your feeder. You can put whatever sort of little feeder you like in there.